Georgia in Hawaii, when Georgia O'Keeffe painted What She Pleased, by Amy Nevesky, illustrated by Yui Morales. After five days at sea, Georgia O'Keeffe arrived on a green island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. She was greeted with silver coins and lays of plumera, wild ginger, and crown flower. Aloha, Georgia. It was February 1939 and the Hawaiian Pineapple Company had invited the famous artist to tour Hawaii. They wanted her to create two paintings to promote the delights of pineapple juice. Georgia visited the pineapple field soon after her arrival on the island of Oha. She found the sharp and silvery fruit quite strange and beautiful. She wanted to live nearby so she could study it up close. But the Pineapple Company would not let her. Only workers live near the fields, they said. Georgia protested that she was a worker too and could live wherever she wanted. The company refused to allow it. Instead, they presented her with a pineapple. Georgia was disgusted. She did not want to paint the fruit now that had been picked, and she would not let anyone tell her what to paint. Despite the pineapple trouble, Georgia started the tour. She flew to the island of Maui. There, she stayed on an old sugar plantation at the edge of a rainforest and carried a paper umbrella when it rained. In a borrowed banana wagon, she drove the tightly winding mountain roads. Georgia went where she wanted, when she wanted. And Georgia painted. Georgia painted waterfalls and green pleated mountains, lava hardened into fantastic shapes, and delicate feathered fish hooks that she collected like seashells, and Georgia painted the blue, blue ocean. Next, she traveled by steamer to the big island of Hawaii, where she admired volcanoes that rose thousands of feet into the sky. She walked on black sand beaches, reached only by boats, and studied rare pieces of red coral. She met the local cattle ranchers, or Canilo. These Hawaiian cowboys showed her their garden. And Georgia painted flowers, birds of paradise, and philandrian, foot-long heliconia, and fragrant plumera, torch ginger, and silver cup, lotus, and hibiscus. She painted a nanahuna that she picked by the side of the road. It reminded Georgia of her favorite desert flower the Dimson Weed. In Kauai, her last stop, Georgia visited with local artists. She stayed at the seaside home of former Hawaiian queen near Kola, a small mill town surrounded by fields of wild sugar cane. Soon, she was used to the scent of burning sugar in the air. Georgia was even starting to look like an island girl. But too soon, Georgia's Hawaiian tour was over. It was April and time for her to return home. In the deck of an elegant ocean liner, Georgia watched the green islands grow smaller and smaller until it was just her and the sea and the sky. Georgia had created nearly 20 paintings of Hawaii, but she had not painted a pineapple. Instead, she gave the Hawaiian Pineapple Company paintings of a heliconia flower and a papaya tree. They were not happy. They wanted a pineapple. Georgia was not happy either. She was not going to be told what to paint. But then she thought about Hawaii and all that it had given her. She decided to give a company what they wanted. 36 hours later, a Hawaiian pineapple arrived at Georgia's penthouse in New York City. Though Georgia didn't need it. When she closed her eyes, she could still see Hawaii and its sharp, beautiful fruit. And Georgia painted a pineapple. The end.